Welcome back. This is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over the face change worksheet. So with that in mind, let's get started. First question asks, what happens in an exothermic reaction? Is heat going to be absorbed or is it going to be released? Well, exo meaning out and thermal meaning heat. That's going to tell us that heat is going to be released. We can usually detect these changes with a thermometer by feeling the surroundings and seeing if they become hotter. Two asks, well, what about an endothermic reaction? Well, in an endothermic reaction, heat is going to be absorbed. The way that we'll detect these changes is by noticing a decrease in temperature or things that will feel cold. So then what about when we boil water? Will the temperature change? If we keep adding heat... Well, what... So then what happens when you boil water? Does the temperature change? Does it So then what happens when you boil water? So then what happens when you boil water? Does the temperature of the water change while it's boiling? In order to explain this, you're going to have to go through one of my really bad drawings. So here we have our glass of water. If we were to add heat, well, according to what we've learned in class, as we add more heat, temperature should increase. But if you've looked at a pot of boiling water, you notice that right before it starts boiling, you'll see these bubbles start to form. That's actually water in its liquid form that transformed into... <laughs> that's liquid water that changed into its gas form. As it becomes a gas, it's going to escape, going into the surroundings. Now, why is that a big deal? Because these are the high energy molecules. So as they escape, they are taking heat with them. So even though we're adding heat, we're going to have a net gain of zero. So our temperature isn't going to change. It isn't until we see all of these molecules go from liquid to gas that we'll see the temperature start to change again. So now what if instead of what if instead of heat so what if instead of heating the water, we try to cool it? You have a cup of hot water, you add some ice. We know that the ice is gonna melt, but where does that heat come from? Well, we know that it's gonna come from the fast moving or hotter water molecules. The higher temperature molecules in the hot water are going to collide with the slower moving particles in the ice. As they collide, the slower moving particles in the ice are going to slowly start speeding up, causing it to melt. So then where does the heat from the hot water go? Well, as it collides with the slower moving particles in the ice, it's going to cause it to slow down. It's going to cause it to lose some of that temperature causing it to cool. But not only will the heat from the water go into the water molecules, some of it will also end up going into the surroundings where it's being held or just into the air around it itself. So now let's work on some definitions. We want to know what latent heat is. Well, the word latent means that, you know, you can't see it. So using that with heat, we're going to just use that to describe the amount of heat needed to change a substance state whether it's from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. The reason we call it latent is because we can't see or measure those changes exactly with the thermometer. If we kept the thermometer there, it would still read that same temperature, even though we're still adding heat. Other steps we can go through, there are different phase changes. They're going to require different amounts of heat. So the first thing that we're going to use to describe is the heat of fusion which we use to describe the amount of energy needed for something to go from solid to liquid. We will always use the heat of fusion during phase changes from solids to liquid. Now heat of vaporization, same idea, but now we're going to be going from liquid to gas. So it's going to be the amount of energy needed to convert whatever substance we're working with to help it go from the phase, from the liquid phase, to its gas phase. Now we're just going to be looking at some practice problems. We want to know the heat required to melt 25 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius. 
So melting, that's going to be a phase change from solid to liquid. So we're going to have to use our heat of fusion. So to find the heat needed, we're going to need our mass of our substance and its heat of fusion. So looking at our table, we know that our mass is 25.0 grams. The heat of fusion for solid ice is going to be 335.5 joules per gram. Plugging those into my calculator, I get a heat needed of 8,340 joules. For 10, same idea. We want to find the heat required to melt 25.0 grams of benzene at 278.6 degrees Kelvin. So again, we're going to need our heat of fusion. So our heat is going to be equal to our mass times our heat of fusion. We know our mass. My table lets me know that the heat of fusion of benzene is going to be 135.5 joules per gram. Plugging those into my calculator, I get a heat of 3,390 joules. For 11, we want to know the heat required to boil. So now we're not going to be using heat of fusion. We're going to be using our heat of vaporization on 25.0 grams of ethanol at 351.5 Kelvin. So again, since we're gonna be boiling, we're gonna use our heat of vaporization. So heat is gonna be equal to our mass times our heat of vaporization for ethanol. We know our mass. My table lets me know that the heat of vaporization of ethanol is 944 joules per gram. Plugging those into my calculator, I get 23,600 joules. 12, we want to know how much heat is going to be required to boil away 25.0 grams of acetone at 329.4 Kelvin. So heat is just going to be my mass times my heat of vaporization for acetone. We know the mass. We know our heat of vaporization for acetone. It's on the table. Plugging those numbers in, we get 12,500 joules. Now here's where the fun starts. We have a sample of water with a mass of 23.0 grams at a temperature of negative 46.0 degrees Celsius. How many kilojoules of heat energy are necessary to, for part A, we want to heat that ice to zero degrees Celsius. So to heat it up to that point, I'm going to use heat is equal to my mass times specific heat of water times that change in temperature. We know the mass. My table lets me know my specific heat for solid water, since it's ice. And my final temperature, well, we're trying to reach a zero degrees Celsius, and we're starting at negative 46 degrees Celsius. Plugging those numbers into my calculator, I get 2,180 joules, or 2.18 kilojoules, since that's what we're being asked to write it as. For B, we want to know how much energy we would need to melt that ice. So we're going to have that phase change from solid to liquid. So we're gonna to have to use our heat of fusion. So our heat is gonna be equal to our mass times the heat of fusion of water. Our mass is 23.0 grams. We know our heat of fusion. We can plug those numbers into our calculator and we get 7,670 joules or 7.67 kilojoules. Now we're going to heat that same sample of water from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So now I went from being a solid to a liquid. So now when we get our specific heat, we're not going to use a specific heat of solid water. We're going to use a specific heat of liquid water. So we know our mass. We know our specific heat of liquid water. We know that our final temperature is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. We're starting off at zero degrees Celsius. So a heat of 9,610 joules or 9.61 kilojoules. We're gonna take that same sample of water and now we're gonna boil it. So we're gonna go from liquid phase to a gas phase. So we're gonna use our heat of vaporization times the mass. So we know our mass, our heat of vaporization is going to be 2,258 joules per gram. And we get a heat of 51,900 joules or 51.9 kilojoules. And last but not least, now we're going to heat that steam from 100 degrees Celsius to 109 degrees Celsius. So we are no longer a liquid. 
we are at a gas phase. So we're going to use our specific heat, not of liquid water, but of gaseous water. So we're going to use, we know our mass. We know that specific heat of gaseous water and we know our change in temperature. So then my heat for that change would be 418 joules or 0 0.418 kilojoules. So for 13, we broke it down piece by piece. For 14, we're gonna have to do the whole thing all at once. So we wanna figure out the amount of heat needed to raise 250.0 grams of ice that's originally at a temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius. So let's write down all of the changes that are gonna happen. So the heat that we're gonna need, well, first we're gonna have to raise our solid water, our ice from negative 15 degrees Celsius to zero, because that's when that phase change will happen from solid to liquid. To get all of our molecules from solid to liquid, well, now we have to add that heat for our heat of fusion. Once all of that is converted, we can raise our temperature of our liquid water from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. At that point, it's gonna go and be in that phase change from liquid to gas. So we're gonna have to use our heat of vaporization and last but not least, we'd have to go from have to go from 100 degrees Celsius of steam to 105 degrees Celsius for our last temperature. <sighs> so writing it all out, my first portion is gonna go from negative 15 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. I'm gonna have to use my specific heat of solid water. Then to make the conversion from solid to liquid, I'm gonna have to use my heat of vaporization for water. Then I can raise my temperature from zero degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. To convert it from liquid to gas, I have to use my heat of vaporization. And then to raise it that last little bit, I'm gonna use my specific heat of steam. So then plugging all of that into my calculator, I get 763,000 joules or 763 kilojoules. Luckily, this one isn't as bad. We want to know the amount of heat required to change 25.0 grams of liquid ethanol. That is at 158.7 Kelvin to a gas at 351.5 Kelvin. So looking at our table and seeing the specific phase changes for ethanol, if you don't know them off the top of your head, well, we know that at first we can raise our temperature from its gas all the way to its boiling point, which is going to be at 351.5 degrees Kelvin. So my mass, the specific heat of liquid ethanol, and that change of temperature. But then to convert it from a liquid to a gas, I need to add my heat of vaporization for ethanol. So that's going to be 944 joules per gram. Adding that to my calculator, I get 35,300 joules or 35.3 kilojoules. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But other than that, Stay safe and I'll see y'all next time.